Hey, Rav, thanks a lot for being here. It's such an amazing opportunity for us to have you here. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Leo. And uh, I'd just like to say it's an amazing opportunity for me to be with you. For the few people who don't know you, uh, you've been playing with a lot of legends. I mean, from James Brown, Elton John, and Paul McCartney, Madonna, and the list goes on and on. So... The first question, let's get into it. Uh, what are the most important skills you should develop uh, in order to be successful as a drummer or session drummer? That's a great question. Um, I think the most important skills are playing really fantastic time. Okay. Making a really great sound. Okay knowing the music every style of music that you're going to play and some more mm. and having a wide range of skills okay. i think those are the four aspects that are really important okay uh, i saw a lecture of yours on uh, youtube and you were talking to a bunch of students about you know knowing different styles and be well-rounded and you were uh, basically saying, like, if you want to get better at, say, swing, listen to Count Basie. If you want to, you know, play better funk, uh, listen to James Brown. So yeah. could you dig into this uh, topic a little bit more? Is it about just focused listening, uh, transcribing or anything else? Um, yeah, it, it, it is about focused listening. And uh, I like the way you use the term focused, um, because there are there are two different types of listening. There's listening for pleasure. And then there's focused analytical listening, which is something a little different. And um, if you learn to listen to music, where you are really going inside it and understanding what goes on and what the drummer is doing, what he does and how he does it then you can really benefit from that listening okay so i say to all my students listen to music you must listen to music for inspiration 50 percent of your listening is is work it's learning it's understanding it's analyzing it's transcribing all of this stuff transcribing note for note and try to interpret what you transcribe and make it your own right yeah uh, i try to encourage people to transcribe i've transcribed loads and um it's a really great way of of learning stuff that is out there and it's for free there are tons of books but if you listen to a drummer and you love his or her uh things that they play um why not work it out that's that's what we did before you know, before Steve Gadd was transcribed, um, before all of these other people that we were listening to were transcribed. Uh, now you can even get books. Uh, have you seen that? There's a Philly Joe Jones yeah. drum solos book, which is incredible. It's like a real book, isn't it? Which has got Philly drum solos in. I mean, all of those things are uh, a great learning process, and I, I encourage people to do it. It's better in a way to transcribe things yourself often because then you really soak up music okay but also you can get transcriptions from books and learn how to play this stuff okay. and then and then just to put the listening and the transcription together if you want to improve and get a really good improvement curve going then learn to play that music and make it sound just like the original so you can sound as close as you can to your favorite drummers okay cool so that's a really huge and important part of a practice routine right so it's not just about you know uh, exercise uh you know uh, for hands and feet so you have to develop a really good listening skill right yeah it, it, you know i i try to uh, um encourage and, and i've done this myself Try and get a balance, you know, as drummers, we're doing something that is most of the time pleasurable. We have an amazing privilege to play music and it's a beautiful thing to do. Yeah. So we're kind of, you know, we're, we're artists, we're creative artists, we're musicians, we're making uh, a, a, our mark on the music. And it's an individual statement. Every musician has got something to say and that is great. Yeah. We want that. 
but mix up um, listening with analytical listening with inspiration and learning and if you mix all of those together i think you can keep your learning experience stimulating mm -hmm. fun enjoyable yeah so you can flit around change between say hey this week i'm really listening to sunny Payne with count basie oh that's amazing um next week i'm listening to jeff Picaro on breaking away al Giro. wow that's great uh, and steve gad um next week i'm listening to um uh, marcus gilmore with chick Corea. next week i'm listening to something else all of these things are part of your makeup and they will soak into your mentality okay and then you will become a bigger musician if you can combine inspiration, which is really important, with learning. And if okay. you keep all that together, it keeps the the learning is fun. And you're like, yeah, you know, look, you know, I've achieved something. It now what you said about practice, like having a structured practice regime, it does work. It's very important. But you mustn't just make that dry. Mm -hmm. If you're just playing along with your favorite records only you're not going to make enough progress if you're just only doing rudiments and then just really strictly playing along with the click or both extremely important mm -hmm. and disciplined measured you're not going to have the creative side strongly enough you have to have creative side living like a living uh, being and then you need the skills of playing tightly to a click making sure your drumming's in time making sure that your hands are are good making sure you can play to a click making sure you play the styles all of those things they marry up together so when i'm playing i try to think creatively it's it's one side of the brain but yeah. the other side is is like the computer the, the main chip it's yeah. running the way I play stuff, my grip, my approach. It's analyzing my sound. It's making sure that the time is solid. It, it's allowing a certain margin of error. It's listening to everyone. That That is a, a brain function that you have to practice. Very much like um, driving a car. Mm -hmm. Driving a car is a complex set of skills. It is. And you only need to add one more thing into the equation such as someone being distracted and they take a phone call and they fall to bits. And that's a proven fact. There are lots of things to do at one go uh, and you have to concentrate on it. So same with drums, we've got loads of stuff going on. So all of that um, playing, the mechanical side of playing mm -hmm. combined with artistic creativity has to be put it put together so that you can relax, enjoy yourself and you know that you're not gonna come off the road. Or yep. come away from the time or yep. play a fill that speeds up or slows down. These things, you have to get this stuff automatic. I was uh, listening to a video of yours or maybe it was a masterclass I attended back in the day with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you were talking about during the practice time, focusing mm -hmm. on simple stuff, but make it sound great. So what's this simple stuff you focus on with your students? Great question there, Leo. And um, uh, that is exactly one of my main uh, central tenets of my, of my helping people to improve. Okay. S simple stuff, it, nothing is simple. But what we start with is we start with in my opinion, the most important skill to start with is learning to play really good time, mm -hmm. which is essentially simple. It's not all that simple, but uh, so you have a very solid, confident foundation to your playing. And it, it is a skill. It's not just something that's God given and uh, oh, yeah, he's great. He's always been great. You everyone has talent. You can develop talent. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's my job <laughs> uh, as a teacher. My job is to develop talent. So what you've got to do is you, you have to work on this stuff to get it really good. So simple stuff is, is a matter of building your foundation, just like if you build a wall 
or you build a house, you must put foundations in the ground, otherwise it will fall down. Now, if you start uh, a drummer who's got relatively uh, basic skills and then you say, hey, right, OK, let's just play like a linear songo like Dave Weckl does, which is not that complicated, actually, but just really fantastic and great. Or let's play some Gary Chafee linear stuff or some Dave Garibaldi or some Mike Clark, yeah. or whatever. This stuff isn't uh, it is taking one jump ahead of the ability to play really great sounding solid time mm -hmm. that will come. But if you don't have uh, the ability to play really great basic groove, such as the true greats, uh, Ringo, Lee Von Helm, John yeah. Bonham, um, you name it, all of them, um, then you, you can't really move on from that. You've got to build that foundation. So that is the simple stuff. And likewise, when you're playing jazz and you're learning jazz, and a lot of people are interested in jazz, they want to learn jazz, lots of people come to me and then they they have started uh learning independence exercises mm -hmm. but unfortunately they haven't got the basis of a really swinging jazz beat first and oh. you must do that okay once you've got a really great jazz beat then you can put the independence in but if you haven't got that and many people just haven't learned that yet but that's what i do with all my students then you can go to the next level and then once you're swinging if you can play a swing groove that's as beautiful as art blakey okay uh you know you don't even need that much independence <laughs> yeah true true right. right you know yeah yeah once you've got that then it's like wow this is gorgeous this works now we you don't need to say so much if you've got a groove that's that good I it's like know, the the simplicity of steve jordan simplicity quote unquote yeah. I mean. well steve jordan is you know really one of my favorite drummers of all time and uh, he's a master of this of course um uh, you know i call three of my really favorite drummers the great groovers of the modern day i call the three steves which is steve jordan steve gadd and steve ferroni i mean these guys are are absolute monsters in it and 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 they've got varying uh technical uh attributes as well it doesn't really matter because 90 of what they got these guys are doing when they're playing on people's records and they're playing on more you know they're doing more sessions than anyone else well most well they have done anyway uh mm -hmm. over the years are, are because they've got incredible grooves the fact that these guys are also amazing technicians is almost irrelevant yeah because yeah. they've got the basics so there when steve jordan plays on something it's like hello <laughs> it's so, undeniable right oh It's undeniable. It's beautiful. It, it, it's, it's got an understanding for the music. And he's the first person to say, just to relate this to the music, he's the first person to say, hey, you know, like, you know, just check out the music of James Brown. Um, this is uh, this is this is the birthplace of, of funk amongst other places. But, yeah. you know, if I do it with my students. And if you haven't checked out that music and you haven't studied it, you, you, you've got a hole in your playing that's really never going to be filled. You're always going to fall into it. Yeah, yeah, because you yeah. have to do that and you know i can hear that in in steve jordan amongst many others because jordan's such a three-dimensional musician and i i saw him play with eric clapton a few yeah. years ago in london and it was it was just astonishing mm -hmm. uh he took his whole thing to the gig and i've seen steve gadd play with clapton as well also astonishing two different guys two different approaches yeah beautiful bringing their own thing yeah and I guess another part uh, which is related to playing music and the performance is the mindset. So yes. I, uh, I wonder if in your career you have ever experienced some difficult or a challenging situation during a live or during a recording session and how did you manage to overcome it? A great question again, Leo. Um... I, I, I totally subscribe to what you're saying about mindset, and I, I think it's extremely important. Mm -hmm. I've had many 
difficult, awkward, tough situations that I have got through, and they could be from um, a lack of confidence. And I'm not really an unconfident person. I'm I'm pretty confident when I'm playing, but still, sometimes you can get some things, and they will they will shake your confidence, and that that can have a bad effect on you. Uh, whether it's been working on some recording sessions, which I have done for clients who uh, weren't necessarily that happy with what I was putting on their music mm-hmm. and and finding a way through that. OK. Um, and then sometimes working with artists who can be perceived to be difficult or asking you difficult things. Um, you know, I could talk about quite a lot of situation with with Van. But Maurice, uh, right? Yeah, and uh, he he's he, he's not necessarily a, a difficult person, but he asks a lot from a musician. And if you're not able to give it to him, or you're not willing to understand what mindset he's in, you're going to find it very very difficult. So that's one of the things about, like you said, mindset. It's so important to adapt your mindset to the situation you are in and try to bring a positive mindset. Mm -hmm. But also in the process, you have to you have to feel good when you're working with musicians that you have to make them feel good and you have to feel good. It's an honest relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So the mindset is super important. And the way you do that is to. Think about it. Try and f- genuinely find out what the artist wants, how they want it. Be helpful. Be positive. Try to contribute, but try to be open to whatever the artist wants. I did a session um, a long time ago, just a, a small, tiny example. Um, and um, we we did a really nice uh kind of uh, almost latiny funky groove but quite quite simple and then um and then the uh the artist said to me look uh, you know what? i really think this need this needs a hi hat on top of this groove on 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 two and four and i i honestly didn't agree with him okay uh this is a great artist uh it, he wrote a beautiful song i played on it I was like, yeah, I, I think it's, I, you know, I don't know if I, he said, like, can you overdub that? I was like, yeah, I could overdub it. Yeah, it would probably sound a bit unnatural because I wouldn't be able to play this groove and overdub the hi-hat okay. at the same time. Um, he said, yeah, I think it'd be great, though. Uh, so, and, and I really didn't want to do it. And I said, okay, you know, let's let's give it a go um he's like yeah i'm i'm definitely hearing that i was like sure i went in and i overdubbed the hi-hat on two and four and sure as anything it was the perfect idea for the groove all right really yeah so it was really, right it's just right he was a hundred percent right and i i was a hundred percent wrong mm-hmm. but i my mindset i respect the artist and i re- i respect who i'm playing with and if they've got ideas even if it's the bass player in the band says can you do this or why don't you try that it's like well yeah why not um if you, part of the part of the mindset sketch is leaving your ego at the door at the door right you have to balance your own skills your own experience uh your own uh, music uh, ideas with uh, the artist one, right? Yes, these are wise words, Leo. <laughs> are wise words coming from you. You are a mature and experienced musician <laughs> and teacher. Yeah, these are the things. Um, because the thing is, um, uh, there are things that um, will, you, like you say, you have to balance what you can do and what you can't do and and what will work and what won't work i'll give you an example the most recent thing when that happened to me it was just before lockdown and uh, i was working with my friend hayden bendel who's a, an amazing producer engineer uh on a record for labby sifri beautiful singer songwriter and um 
I mean, I was really uh, very knocked out to be doing this and we were playing in the studio. And Lavi has, like anyone, got some quite firm ideas about what he wanted on the on his tracks. And then he put together quite a complicated demo with a drum machine. And um, and I put a groove down and it wasn't really the same as the drum machine. It couldn't be because the drum machine had quite a few program parts. OK. And I tried to come up with the very best part that I could for it, which I think was OK. It was nice. And then he in he started asking me, he's like, oh, yeah, look, can you can you you've got 16s on the hi hats. That's good. Now, can you accent like the offbeats? Yeah. OK. I said, yeah, of cool, course. Cool. You know, I started doing that. And then he said, now, I want you to like the first uh, uh, the first snare drum. I want you to drop it back like one sixteenth note. So don't get to And uh, so I was like, yeah, yeah, OK, that's great. I can do that. And then I want you to do something else with, with the bass drum. I was like, yeah, OK, great. Started doing that. And then he said, and then I, I want a little bit of toms on there or, or something. I can't remember what he was. He said. And um, and I tried to get that in there. And every little thing yeah. that he was getting me to do was due to my own fallibility, slightly taking away from the quality of the groove that I know best and can play really well and sounds great. OK, so we ended up Hayden knew this. He was producing the session. He was like, yeah, this is. I know, Lavi, this is cool, but uh, I think what was going on originally was feeling a lot better. So we spent a little while playing around with it, you know, and then he said, oh, I just have a listen to like take one or take two. And we put it back on. It's like, ah, uh, yes, <laughs> it's a balance of what you can do, marrying it up with what it needs to be done for the music. Okay. And so when we're learning, we need to learn lots of skills. Uh, so we can do loads of stuff. Um, some people would be able to do stuff like that and make it sound amazing. Uh, you know, Vinny, Dave Weckl, they've got incredible facility. They can do anything. Uh, there are there are millions of drummers who can do all this stuff nowadays uh, and make grooves sound great. I haven't got quite that capability. But... Yeah. Uh, I've got enough to get to get a really great simple groove happening and for people to like that on their record. So thank goodness for that. So thank you so much for your time. And, and, you know, it's been such a great pleasure. And I hope to meet you soon over here in Italy. OK, I hope so. Uh, thank you for asking me once again. Uh, hello to all my Italian friends out there. Um, Keep strong, keep the faith. We're going to get through the lockdown and we're going to come out the other side and we're going to, we're going to have a few, few drinks together. Yeah, I hope absolutely. to see you soon. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, man. I'll see Thanks. you soon. Yeah.